welcome to KYE Talks. I am your host, Tripta Kolbert Natkarni. Here on this digital platform, we speak with the entrepreneurs from various fields who tell us why they didn't want to be uh, why they didn't want to be stuck in the typical nine to five, but decided to do something different, something out of the box, and decided to follow their heart. So one such successful entrepreneur we will be speaking with today is Mr. Neeraj Shah. He is the owner and director of Silver Bright. A heavy mechanical engineering manufacturing company. Silver Bright has been ranked among the top five innovative companies from SMEs across India. It was also presented with a prestigious award as the top three most innovative companies in India by the UK. And what's more impressive is it was awarded at the Queen's birthday celebration. That is so amazing. So uh, Neeraj also has a diverse experience of working in industry of software, software and lifestyle, fashion, as well as promoting Hollywood movies. He is a TEDx speaker and currently a mentor at various institutions like the Atal Incubation Center, NITI-IO, as well as the Founder Institute Board. So that's a really amazing and impressive uh, body of work, Neeraj. Hi, and uh, thank you so much for coming on the KY Digital Platform and speaking with us. How are you doing today? Good, sure, yeah. Good, good, good. Doing well, wonderful. Yeah. Doing great. Okay, thank you. wonderful. So uh, your body of work is indeed very amazing. So can you please tell us more uh, about your venture, about Silver Pride? Sure, sure. So uh, I've been an entrepreneur for around 19 years now. I started this, uh, my journey in 2001 after I finished my engineering okay. uh, from, from, from the Pune uh, city itself. Okay. Well, uh, so yeah, I've, uh, yeah. So I mean, I've dabbled in uh, around four ventures uh, till date, starting from software, fashion, films, and then I got into the steel industry. Uh, the reason I got into the steel industry was because, uh, I mean, I love automobiles um, okay. and this was in around 2008, 2009, okay. uh, where um, basically uh, fuel was getting expensive okay. and uh, automotive companies were looking at increasing uh, the average fuel efficiency of a car. Okay. Uh, so, you know, there's this, uh, you know, technical term called as uh, weight. Uh, so, I mean, a light weight thing where uh, you try and reduce weight of a component of a car wherein uh, because of which uh, of course you do not uh, you know try and uh, play with the safety features okay. but you try and reduce the weight of the component okay. thereby it also reduces uh, the weight of uh, the component the car uh, it gives you better fuel efficiency okay. and also you know you do reduce the price of the component also so uh, that's what i started to do um, i try to replace a solid steel bar with a hollow steel tube so, I mean, it, it, like, you know, in engineering terms, um, if you see the strength to weight ratio, okay. um, so, the, so a one kg hollow tube will be stronger than a one kg solid bar of steel. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what, uh, you know, we, we intended to do. Okay. And uh, that's how the journey started. Okay. Yeah. Very neat. Yeah. So uh, what's <laughs> the, um, uh, you know, motivation behind the word uh, silver bright, like, Pretty unique because of the color of the steel tube is like very shiny. And yeah, yeah. So, so I would say the motivation is actually being an entrepreneur, and uh, the motivation behind being an entrepreneur is uh, first is um, you know you are your own boss. That is uh, the most amazing part of you know being an entrepreneur. Right. I think second is the flexibility. Yeah. Uh, the flexibility is unparalleled. Uh, just being an entrepreneur, the money is there. I cannot deny that. No one can deny that. Uh, there is obviously a lot of money to be made, which is one of the key motivating factors for any entrepreneur out there. Uh, you know, third or fourth is fourth point is like the control you have. So control you have over your own life, the control you have over your own venture, uh, the people you employ, uh, the way you want to take your business forward. I think it's purely unbeatable. Okay. Uh, the teamwork is something which also matters being an entrepreneur. Uh, that's one of the key motivations because you are actually kind of carrying your entire team forward with you. So today at Silverbright, we employ more than 120 people wow. and it's, yeah, so it's like a small family, you know, and you know, we just uh, kind of, you know, ride the wave together. So yeah. that's something amazing. And I think one of the most, one of the last and the most important points of basically motivation of being an entrepreneur is the leg to leave back. 
uh, I think that is uh, something which uh, very few people talk about, but it should be spoken about. Right. Uh, because finally, you want to be known by your actions, right? And I think that's one of my key motivations also, is the legacy that I will be leaving back eventually. Right, right, right. That's amazing. So you get to be your own boss, but plus you get to help people, plus, you know, obviously the most important, like you said, you get to leave your legacy. So I think yeah, yeah. it's wonderful. So, uh, you know, what, what is it about this field that gives you, you know, that uh, sense of accomplishment or like a kick to Bultena, like, you know, wow, like okay. I could have done the right thing by being an entrepreneur. Right, right. So, uh, to give you an example, for example, in my uh, in, in like in the latest venture in Silver Bright, uh, I think I could create a difference in the world because where we are trying to reduce the weight of automobiles yes. by every gram, yes. uh, that saves a lot of steel. That also saves a lot of fuel. Yes. So, you know, if you look at it, you know, we are you know, helping the planet also. You know, go green. Yes. So, I think making a difference in the world. Is uh, is one of like you know, it's it, it's a great feeling, honestly. Also, uh, you know, when uh, you build a business, there's a great satisfaction, you know, uh, of doing something different. So I think that's a great uh, like you know feeling of accomplishment too. Also, uh, on the personal growth front, uh, it is very fulfilling. Uh, and of course, you know, uh, you know, you're basically also helping others achieve their goal. So right. when you have your own team. Um, and you know you're so close knit because you work together. You know in uh, you know like in these you know real life tough situations right. that you also kind of help people achieve what they really want to do. Right. So I think uh, these are some of the key factors you know which actually motivate me to do what I do and just keep doing it more. You know right. Right. that way. Helping people, I think that's definitely yeah yeah. Thing. Also, also I do believe that. Uh, there's this whole ecosystem of, of entrepreneurs, you know, who are out there right. and who are looking for, uh, you know, like this motivation and mentoring. Right. So I have been, uh, you know, mentoring startups for the last 10 years now. Okay. Uh, so this was in now 2008 when I started my steel company. Yeah. Uh, Pune lacked a good ecosystem for entrepreneurs. Okay. So I, uh, you know, so me and along five or five others, we started this, uh, like, you know, this, this thing called Thai Puna. So it's called, I mean, like the Indus Entrepreneurs. Okay. Uh, so it's a group of entrepreneurs globally, yeah, who all come together. So okay. five of us started this in 2008. And today we have more than, I think, 700 members. And along with that, then again, started, you know, becoming quite active in the industry forums. So the more entrepreneurs you meet, the more you realize, you know, uh, that, all of us are kind of sailing the same boat right. and it's always good to be there, you know, with fellow entrepreneurs. It's you can, one is that you can help each other. You can also get inspired by their stories and their journeys. Right. So okay. that's one of the key factors. Okay. I think that's very neat. The tie, the in this uh, uh, TIE, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. TIE. So it's a, it's a, the world's largest entrepreneurial network okay. and every major city in India has one, okay. has a chapter. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. Pretty good. Similar one. Nice, nice. Yeah. Awesome. So, uh, like any new venture, when you start, you know, there are some obstacles and barriers, you know, that you face. So, in right. your journey, what right. were some of the barriers you broke, or you know, what are some of the obstacles, okay. challenges that you face? Okay. Uh, so, I take you back 19 years in 2001. Okay. Uh, the first venture that I started was I had this idea doing my engineering okay. where uh, this was in 1999, you know, where, uh, you know, clothing companies uh, had just started selling clothes online and uh, they had amazing sales, but uh, their rejection rates were quite huge because people shopped online, but they did not understand how the particular outfit fit on them yeah. because there was nothing like a fitting room online at that time. And you know, and you know how it is, right? You know, they're just trying out something new. Right. And um, typically, the replacement cost is borne by the clothing company. Okay. So, uh, in the US, for example, uh, they had great sales, but their replacement costs were pretty huge. Okay. And this kind of struck me. You know, I realized that uh, here is something which should be looked at. Right. Uh, so, um, you know, I finished my engineering and I started writing a business plan right. around this whole concept. concept. Right. And uh, so I remember, you know, uh, I went to my father for, you know, money, you know, to, you know, like to make this idea. And again, you know, typically we are from the city, you know, so he said, I don't understand this. 
and just you know don't come to me for this you know i don't think i can help you out so then i realized that uh, you know going to friends and family i tried that it really didn't work and then someone told me that you know you should start writing a business plan uh, so it took me around four months to you know draft my first plan and it was around a 200 page document which i had created uh, and then i sent it out and i got no response at all you know and then someone told me that you know why don't you shorten it because no one has the time to read 200 pages so i said fine then i again sat for a month and you know reduced this 200 page document to a eight page document right. and then i sent it out and then i started getting a lot of uh, you know attention towards this so right. long story short uh, in around nine months of uh, you know starting my journey of writing my business plan mm-hmm. i could raise around 2 million dollars from the us wow and that's how this entire company was born Yeah, so I think I was Pune's first funded company in the startup sector at that time. But of course, that time we didn't have a ecosystem, we didn't have the press looking at startups. Right, right. And then I started my center, software development center here in Aon. Then I had my marketing office in the US. Okay. And uh, that journey started. Okay. I started, uh, you know, uh, approaching a lot of clothing companies in the US. Okay. And eventually, I mean, I did this for three and a half years. i mean like before i took exit okay yeah so so of course you know during this time um, you know since it was my uh, first venture yeah. um, you know i realized that hiring employees was very difficult because you are just out of college you know right. and that's when i realized that for a for a new entrepreneur you know who's just beginning uh, hiring employees is extremely difficult right. even how do you manage your own time i think that is something which every entrepreneur struggles with um and uh, you know how do you choose what to sell right. so when i started the online platform right. there were many ways i could actually try and create a revenue okay. so choosing what exactly you want to sell is a big question today what i try and help people you know when i mentor right. uh also business growth uh because you know everybody finally you know success is what is <laughs> i like you know like seen at the end of the day right. so how do you um, you kind of uh, look look at this business growth that's another part uh, you know which is a big obstacle today and also a self doubt when it comes to uh, you know for an entrepreneur uh, i think i think this is one of the major major obstacles if you see today uh, and even if you see with the situation what we face today it's all in the mind you know um, and if you can somehow break this barrier uh, you will see wonders you know to any growth story of any entrepreneur out there Absolutely, because you know you you kept at it, you, you didn't give up, and now obviously after so many years you can see the results, and you know obviously inspiring so many uh, across the world, and uh, you were so right. an amazing award at the Queen's Birthday celebration. So how was it actually? How was the whole experience? Yeah, so that was nice. So this was around two thousand twelve, two thousand thirteen. My steel company had just stabilized uh, after five years. and uh, through a common connect uh, you know they just told me that uh, this uk trade and industry okay. looking at uh, innovation in the small and medium sector manufacturing uh, sector of india okay. and they wanted to see what kind of uh, you know innovation is happening here so then they asked me to apply so i applied and i showcased them actual case studies of how i have managed to save uh, so much uh, steel consumption in automobile Mm-hmm. Uh, and i gave them example of a steering wheel of a car okay. so earlier a steering wheel of a car had a solid steel bar which had foam coating on it okay. and i converted this into a hollow tube with foam coating okay. and it saved around 1.3 kg per steering wheel wow. you multiply that by half a million cars that the amount of steel you save and with all the safety factors in check okay. and you know and they were all like you know, so so i started you know giving a few examples and then uh, um i think around the 450 companies across india approached for this and uh, i think i came in the top 3 and then uh, the uk government they sent me for a completely paid uh, trip to the uk where i uh, spoke to all the top automobile man- manufacturers there uh, i spent a month over there and of course then uh, they opened up a lot of doors right. so then i spoke to potential suppliers so i mean that was wonderful right uh, yeah and now again you know uk is uh, it's in the top 5 in terms of you know innovation also right 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 so it was wonderful what they do and 
you know what's right and you know what works for them right absolutely i think that's really awesome and once again hardik congratulations on winning that award so that will be my next question what at this point do you think is needed for you to reach your business aspirations or your business goals okay um i think uh, one of the key uh, factors which is important today is uh, what you are to yourself as an entrepreneur right. uh, when i mean i mean all factors may be you know what's in my mind uh, what is it that i perceive uh, my business to be right. and what is it i perceive my issues and problems to be so i think that's one of the key factors right. uh, second is is is, is a industry you can't uh, you know avoid that so um, you know i've seen so many entrepreneurs startups uh, you know today uh, they have these amazing ideas uh, with a lot of innovation um, and you know of course they can make it at the lowest cost um, you know they have figured out the entire supply chain everything is figured out but uh, what they fail to see is the industry in win in which they want to a uh, supply in or in which they want to kind of play their part in right. so i think that is one of the key factors even for me today is in the in which i am today um also um, you know like the service and you know what is it that we make uh, you know for example if it's a manufacturing company it's what we make and for a, if it's for a service based company it's the kind of level of service what we want to give i think those are one of the key uh, factors you know which will uh, you know really redefine uh, what success we get in the coming days right. and also um, what i do feel is that uh, you know what choices we make today uh, really kind of uh, uh, want to show the outcome as to what will come you know later so uh, i see a lot of people especially the things happening today in the market you know uh, in regards to um, you know what we face today in the world you know as a like you know i mean you know like in 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 india so what's happening so i do feel that a lot of today businesses are taking shortcuts they are kind of you know really uh, you know are trying to take steps which may not be best for them so i do tell my team also you know i, I keep telling them that what is being seen today is not permanent it's just some kind of obstacle and we need to be extremely mindful about what we do so so it can even effectively you know communicating what we want to say uh, so today for example uh, you know when i run my business there a lot of uncertainty right. so uh, what i say to my customers what i say to my team what i speak to my supply chain about uh, it should be extremely clear right. uh, and i think that is also one of the key factor which will kind of um, you know make us or break us going ahead right. Right. absolutely that's wonderful and like you said the choices you make today will obviously determine the future and you have to always be in constant communication that is the key yes. so uh, you know yes. will, uh, me to my next question uh, how did this uh, venture change you what were some of the changes it brought it brought about in you okay uh <laughs> so i think as entrepreneurs uh, you know we are all optimist mm. uh, that is uh, you know something which happens when you have your own venture mm. that uh, you tend to see the good in everything uh, second is uh, you tend to see uh, you know some things in people what they fail to see in themselves also so mm. whenever i take in any new uh, you know you know i you know employees for my team or if i meet uh, you know any new customer or supplier uh, you know 19 years of being an entrepreneur has taught me to see uh, you know things in people which perhaps even you know, they don't look at in themselves uh, and i think that's a gift which you get finally uh, and that's something which is invaluable and and it is extremely invaluable you know? uh, so i think uh, that i mean I, I, like i think that is their third is uh you do see uh you do try and see an opportunity um, in everything in life so even in day to day affairs uh, suppose you go to buy something in a shop uh, you know i will try and uh, look at it from a entrepreneur's perspective that is there an opportunity here uh, because perhaps i will not look at it for myself but as i mentor you know so many companies out there you know in different sectors it's a great example to give the mentees also you know so i do try and look at you know looking at uh, new ventures new possibilities 
uh, new innovations in every step of life. So I think that is how my venture has changed me. And also, I think um, it does make you humble. So uh, I think 19 years of uh, struggle and, uh, you know, the ups and downs which come in business uh, do make you realize the importance of money, the importance of, you know, family, uh, the importance of friends along you and the importance of silence also. Because at the end of the day, we all work towards something in life for the silence, you know, which follows. Right. And uh, that is something which the last four months has given me. Yeah. Uh, since business has been kind of quiet, you know, we have right. been asked forcibly to sit at home. Right. I think it is the silence which I enjoy now. Right. So, so I think I think there are these amazing few factors, you know, which have influenced me uh, post being an entrepreneur. Absolutely, very well said. You know, enjoying the silence. With the first uh, break, so to speak, and finding the good in everybody, in the, so that's really amazing. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what what are some of the modifications you've done in you know, the wake of this ongoing pandemic? What are some of the changes you had to do? Already? Yeah. So, I think post the pandemic, I think um, we have been extremely cost conscious, okay. and we have tried to uh, you know, sustain our cash. Right. Uh, we have also looked at you know like the debt yeah. we have today. Right. And uh, we have been in constant talks with our bankers okay. um, because those are those are the ones should be kept very close to you right now. Okay. Uh, it's the bankers, you know, who should be really uh, I think constant communication. Yeah. And this has been throughout, even with suppliers who have always supported us, you know, in tough times. And of course, uh, um, you know, with the customers. So uh, we have been, uh, you know, constantly, you know, communicating as to. Uh, how exactly we are doing and uh, also with my team so uh, you, know, you know how you know because this has played a part on the human mind you know people are people do fear today you know there's a fear of life there's a fear of you know every possible uh, scenario and uh, the news doesn't help you know so i think i've also stayed away from the mainstream news <laughs> yeah i've also stayed away from the mainstream news yeah, and uh, yes, and also I think personally I've uh, tried to stay physically extremely fit. I've been eating right also because I do believe that a fit mind and a body is required. You know, if you need to have uh, the right frame of thought, so uh, so even that's kind of uh, you know ongoing. Yeah. That's great. You have to take care of yourself, then you can you know actually function. So yeah, very true. Yeah. And uh, that that uh, does bring me to my last question. Uh, that's like, what are some you know? You already said some of them, but if you would like to add some more uh, words of wisdom or advice to the company entrepreneurs out there. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, so yeah, so it's difficult to summarize what I have seen and uh, you know, kind of done in the last nineteen years. But I just would like to say that. Uh, uh, an entrepreneur has to be extremely mindful of every step they take in their venture right. because uh, no matter what, um, it defines uh, failure or success mm. which comes sooner or later. So um, I don't think anything should be looked at in short term. Right. Uh, I think every, every choice should be made uh, long term in mind. Right. Uh, the third thing is that, uh, you know, entrepreneurs should look at, you know, conserving cash. I'm not saying this uh, because, you know, we face a severe problem today. Right. But, uh, you know, I believe that entrepreneurs do not understand the meaning of cash very well. So that is something which should be very mindful of also. Right. And uh, lastly, I just would like to say that, you know, you have to just stick to it. So uh, we have this saying, you know, in Gujarati, is where they say that every business should try and sustain for uh, basically nine days. And after which, um, you know, nothing can stop your business from failing. Right. So I think the first nine, 99 days of a business are extremely critical. And, uh, you know, an entrepreneur must endure the first nine, 99 days, no matter what, they just cannot give up. Wow. You will definitely see success. Right, right. Great. I think those are some amazing words. Like keep at it, think long term and nine nine nine. That is the magic number. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's really nice, Neeraj. Thank you so much you. for uh, coming on the TY digital platform and speaking with us and sure. we wish you all the very best for your venture. Yeah.
Yeah. And it was wonderful to speak to you. Yes. I think even the, the questions you asked was absolutely amazing. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's just you know anything to give back to uh, like the, like the com- community's first priority for me also. Uh, I do hope that you know India does see uh, a lot more entrepreneurs uh, in the coming years. Uh, that's the only way you know we can actually you know uh, kind of you know be a better country also. Very true. Very true. I know. Going well said. So once again, thank you uh, so much for uh, coming and speaking with us on this platform, yeah. and all the best. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.